Hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at the results of last week's auction picks. Up first, the Honda Civic SIR2. This one was unsold and it only got bid up to $5,550. The R34 GTR V-Spec 2 was cancelled. Not sure why, but that's all we know. The Z31 Fairlady sold for just a little bit under Derek's guess. Somebody picked that one up for $5,070. The Honda Civic Type R is another one of those cars that was removed from auction. The bidding went up to $3,820, but then the car was pulled. Wish we knew why this happened. The Nissan Caravan went unsold. That one got bid up to $2,180, but Saddle must think it's worth more than that. The Toyota 11 AE111 went for well under Derek's guess. That one sold for just $1,740. The Toyota Mark II was bid up to almost eight times Derek's guess, but was still unsold at $5,350. There wasn't much interest in the Caldina GT4. It only got bid up to $870 and it went unsold. The Lancer Evo Wagon did sell, and somebody picked that one up for $8,640. The old Nissan Gloria did not sell. That one got bid up to $2,740, but the seller still wants more. There was not a lot of love for the Fiat Multiply last week. That one only got bid up to 1270 and it was unsold. The Toyota Chaser Avante did sell, and that one went for just 4640 And finally, the Familia GTX also sold. This went for less than half of Derek's guess, with somebody picking that one up for 2640 Not bad. That's going to do it for last week's picks. Now here's Derek with this week's. Hello, everybody. It is Derek here, and thanks, Andrew, for showing us last week's auctions. And now these ones, the live auctions that are happening right now in Japan, you guys can take a look with my assistance in translating the sheets. Now, if you're new to this, you can participate in this if you want. You can use all of this tool to search the Japanese auction, 120,000 cars at Japanese auction every week. And so, very interesting to look through them yourselves, or if you want to participate, then... Uh, uh, make sure that you like us on Facebook, and then every week we put up this post, and it's fun, and, and, and all of that. Okay, so uh, jump into it here with Raymond Yu. He sent in this very first one here. It is quite an interesting one. It made the thumbnail, because these are awesome cars. And then Raymond says, a Volkswagen wagon. What's the name of this model? And so this is a Type 3, which means it's the third vehicle that Volkswagen made, and they made these in a... Uh, a wagon like this that they call the square back or the variant depending on where you were um, where you're located and then they're rear engined and uh, they're very similar to basically everything that Volkswagen made at the time and uh, what I was going to say something else but I forgot what it is uh, the commercial for this is really funny you can look it up on on YouTube and in the commercial they say where's where's the engine in this car and they say, if you want to know where the engine is, you have to ask the Volkswagen dealer. But lucky for you guys, it's it's your lucky day. I'll tell you where it is. It's it's hiding underneath here. And so you have a front trunk and a rear trunk. And as far as I know, it, it might be the only station wagon with a rear engine in it. At least the only one that I can think of. Okay, so it's kind of Beetle-like. I think it's better looking than the Beetles. Uh, I may get in trouble for this, but I think it's better looking than the Volkswagen van, and I think that the wagon version is better than the uh, sedan version, uh, the notchback, and the coupe version. Just a good looking vehicle. Parts might be a little bit hard to find, but maybe not. I mean, they did sell plenty of these. So this one here is a 1997, but not really a 1997. It was imported into Japan in 1997, and so it gets the year of registration from when it was imported. I think the first year of this was like 1961, and then they ended in like the early 70s or something like that. So 1.6 liter engine, that's a Boxer 4 that sits in the back. It would be interesting to take a look at how that engine fits into here, because it's not going to be like a Beetle. Those engines are fairly tall, uh, despite being a flat engine. A flat layout engine, meaning the pistons move horizontal to the ground on either side in, in opposing ways. Body looks to be pretty good. Paint peeling on the roof, a big scratch over here, that's A3, and a bit of rust over here, but compared to most vehicles its age, it seems to be pretty good. It does have underside surface rust and corrosion. It's an auction grade 3.5 with an interior C, 68,886 kilometers. I, I don't 
Oh, yeah, here it is. I was going to say, I don't know if it's a five-digit odometer or not, because that's fairly low mileage for a car that's this old. But yes, in fact, it is a five-digit, so it may have rolled over. It could have 168 or 268,000 kilometers on it. Uh, here, the year is 42. Oh, shoot, that's 1967. 42 is 1967. And uh, left-hand drive, that's good. You want your Volkswagens in left-hand drive. Uh, aftermarket audio, aftermarket shift knob, emblems are missing, oil leak, it wouldn't be a Volkswagen without that, lowered car, and Volkswagens you can lower kind of interesting, I believe that this uses, uh, it doesn't use spring suspension, um, I think it's torsion bar suspension, so you can just rotate your bars to lower it, which is kind of weird, uh, head, uh, what is this, headlights, chrome, is bad? Okay, you can kind of see that in the picture. Body scratches and dents, and that's it. Seems to be in great condition, and I would love to have one of these. If Like, I wouldn't drive this as a everyday car. It would be kind of a pain in the butt to drive every day, but uh, you could. But it would be a very cool uh, special day out kind of car, or just something to leave in your garage and look at every day to, to make you happy. I have one of those right now. Uh, one of those cars that you just <laughs> sit around and don't do anything with and it makes you happy just owning it. And, uh, okay, so price, yeah, I don't know how much these sell for, but in this condition, I'm probably going to guess uh, a million yen for it. I could be way off, though, but that's that's the way it goes. On to the next one from Leslie Lee, sent in an 8.6. Most of the sellers of the 8.6s, they send them to the USS auctions. And because USS doesn't want to be part of these videos, then we're not allowed to show them. But there are plenty of 8.6s in Japan. The downside is that most of them are in terrible, terrible condition, and they're still rather expensive. So this one looks like you can see a bunch of rust on the back. It has the late model tail lights on it, and... This is a Sprinter Trueno, or Toreno, is how the, well, that's kind of like a Canadian accent of a Japanese. I don't like to actually speak in a Japanese accent um, when I don't speak to Japanese people because I'm self-conscious about that. Really interesting here to see the original seat inside this one. Very, very rare to see the original seat. and They rip really easily, and especially on, on the back uh, part that you can't see. You can see a bit of rust peeking in here. Hmm, let's see the sheet. Okay, so this one wasn't inspected. And so it's basically just a parts vehicle. 164, 155 kilometers. It's a 1986 model, which is the first year of the late generation. Uh, or the Koki uh, version. Of course, 1600cc. They only came with that. They did come with automatic transmissions here in Japan, which is weird because the US never got the autos. And so the engine doesn't start in 2000 July. The car had 121,000 kilometers, and when it was sold at auction that time, it said the mileage was unknown at that time. Various corrosion holes throughout the car, and then no inspection from the auction. And so it would be kind of a dumb car to buy, because you don't know anything about it. And because the car is so old, it probably has a lot of damage. And so I'm going, even for parts, it'll still be worth something. And so I'm going to, I'm going to guess 300,000 yen on this one. Next one from Mitch Cowie sent in this. And Mitch, you can be my new boyfriend because I love your choice in cars. Uh, but then I would have to get divorced from my wife and turn gay. Uh, but I love you anyway. <laughs> and so this is uh, the reason why I love him so much is because this is the same car that I own. And I am absolutely loving this car. I do want to make a video explaining my love for the car separately from this video. And so I'm not going to go into too much detail about why I like it so much. But the car being a six speed manual, 240 horsepower, relatively fast feeling compared to the actual horsepower rating. Cool dual exhaust. Nice looks with a deeper bumper. This one here. Uh, completely stock, stock wheels, stock headlights, oh, not stock badge, it shouldn't be black, but mine are black too, and so this one's extra cool. This one has the five doors in it too, and that's even better than the three door version, because the three door is the one that all the Americans got, and they never got the five door, and so it's a little bit special. This one is a right hand drive, like mine is, left hand drive is better, but right hand drive is still cool, because that's the car I have. Uh, not going to be very reliable, but they are fairly sought after. The, this is the Mark IV version, and they sell for 
uh, higher price than the Mark V version, which came afterwards. Partially due to the fact that the Mark V only came with paddle shift DSG transmission and didn't come with a good six-speed manual. Okay, so it's a 2003. They're four-wheel drive, but they're kind of not really four-wheel drive. They're front-wheel drive, and then as soon as the wheel turns a quarter of a rotation by slipping, it engages a 50-50. And so if you're going to be tearing around with squealing tires a lot, then you get that four-wheel drive. But I, I drive like a sane person and never drive like that, so the four-wheel drive is kind of useless for me, other than thinking I'm cool because I have four-wheel drive. That's the only benefit I get from it. 97, 800 kilometers on it. Windshield, rock chip, interior, dirty, scratched, and wear. They don't know which model year this is because it was possibly an imported car. And what is this? Door handles are paint faded. The body has a big scratch over here and some paint fade over here and a big scratch over here and a misaligned front bumper. Okay, so as far as price goes, I think that this one will sell for about 620,000 yen. And it's in the most boring of the colors silver but yeah the golf r32 excellent car it's i think about twice as fast as the regular golf not the gti but the regular golf and this is one one nice step above the gti because the gti and the mark IV wasn't very good okay so thank you mitch my new boyfriend on to the next one kersha siva sent in this one it is one of the only jdm cars that we picked this week which is a bit of a shame for some people but we tend to pick kind of the, the awkward cars and the weird ones that you wouldn't think of, uh, or at least the people who are choosing the cars for this are doing that. And so Kershaw says, this week is the cleanest week I've seen for car sales at auction, it seems. Part of that might be because in February and March, those are the last two months before the fiscal year ends in Japan, and because of that, a lot of car dealers want to sell their inventory out, so if they have any outstanding vehicles, they send them to auction, so they have very tiny amount of inventory by the time the year ends for them. And that means auctions are up like 20 to 30% in their numbers every year, and so pr that pushes prices down, but then the month after that, uh, well... I was going to say the month after that you have the opposite effect, but you don't really because it seems like it takes several months of, of ramping up before it gets back to regular auction. And so buy your cars now. April also has a lot of inventory because a lot of people are buying cars in the springtime, like uh, at dealers here in Japan. And then the cars that are traded into the dealers end up going to auction. Anyways, onto this one. It is an RX-7 FD from 2002, which makes it the last year. 51,446 kilometers. The final year of these are the ones that sell for the highest price. And so we're probably going to see a good high price on this one. The 90s Japanese sports cars are going away now, and these are one of the final ones. The 2002 makes it old, but not too old that it's going to be in terrible condition. It's an octagon 4.5. Interior and exterior are both B. And then it's dealer trade-in, adjustable suspension, power FC computer, aftermarket exhaust, computer intercooler. Uh, I can't read that, <laughs> that one. Spare key, BCAS card, which is a card you need to put into your Navi if you don't want to watch TV. It has a Maps Data, Maps D, I guess, Maps Data, I don't know. Uh, okay, all of that is going to be sent to the buyer. It says very scratches and dents. Uh, some modifications done to the car. Spoilers scratched. Aftermarket clutch with a question mark. Aftermarket LSD with a question mark. Aftermarket door mirrors and interiors dirty. Body looks to be almost perfect. And so we're going to see this sell for top dollar. It looks like it's in good condition. The wheels on it are really nice. The black and the gold is a good color combination. It has subtle changes to the body, uh, like uh, canards. And um, taillight covers. So yeah, it looks like it would probably be a good car. I don't see too many of the late model ones because we're selling most of these to the U.S., which are 1993 and earlier. So starting price is 1.5 mil. I think we'll see this one go to 2.3, which is a good chunk more than what you can get one for when you go for the older ones. <clears throat> Okay, on to the next one. Yoani Esparza sent in this one. Also, Mitch Cowie sent in this, but he already got a pick on there, so we're giving this one to Yoani. So it's a BMW M3. It's E30. This, if nobody is aware, is our unicorn car. It's the car that I believe that we have bid on more than any other car and yet not been able to win one yet. 
And so in 10 years in business, we haven't won an E30 M3. And it's getting to the point where I'm having nervous breakdowns about it. So if there's anyone out there who wants to buy one of these, please, please buy one from me. Because I, I can't wait to have one of these in our inventory just to look at, just to sit in, and just to touch. I don't even know if I've touched one of these in my life. Maybe. Actually, I'm sure I have. Yeah. Okay. But I need to touch more. That's the point of this. It comes with gold wheels that don't really suit the... Well... I think the wheels suit the car, but not the M3 version of the car. I, I think original wheels are probably best, or BBS something, because BMW and BBS kind of go hand in hand. Okay, so what makes this special is it's one of the first, it is the first M3, but one of the first M cars. The first one was an M5 and an M1, and an M6, I believe, came before, or M635 came before the E30 but it has individual throttle bodies it's the only M car that I can think of that has a four cylinder in it there might be some new ones that will come out with a four cylinder in the future but four cylinder M car individual throttle bodies 205 to 215 ish horsepower depending on which version um, there are Evo versions with a little bit more 2.3 liter engine you can get them with a 2.5 for the Evo version which is really rare and really expensive. Even these normal ones are really expensive. 146, 425 kilometers on it. Power steering, power windows, sunroof. BMW Japan, original dealer car. So that means it was originally sold in Japan, not in another country, and then imported. Comes this. Um, what is this? Sunroof, rear vent window. I don't know if that's something special. Rear vent window. Bose RS Watanabe 16 inch wheels. We just bought some wheels and, and caps from Watanabe, some brand new ones for a customer, and sent them to them. The customer service from Watanabe was seriously lacking, and for a company that's universally renowned like that, it's a little bit of a shock. Any Japanese company, that would be a bit of a shock to me. Recaro SR2 bucket seats and uh, projector headlights. Hmm. A bunch of other stuff, uh, BBS spare tire, um, yeah, no cracks in the dashboard. This one doesn't have an inspection, but Zip Osaka is kind of a special auction for higher-end cars, and typically, at least I haven't seen sellers try to sell bad cars there. It's mostly um, people who go to that auction in person for car dealers here in Japan, and not really for the export market so much, so in, in that like, I think the car would probably be good, but because there's no inspection, it would be a risk. That being said, the starting price is $3.5 million. Without knowing the condition, it's hard to say, but I could see this one going for about 4.5. It seems like it's in pretty good shape. So $4.5 million. And uh, Ioanni says, so clean looking, it even has plastic on the seats. That's That might be a trick that dealers like to play to make their car look like they're in better condition or have been maintained better doesn't look like it would be the original plastic plus these seats aren't the original seats either and that would lower the uh, the value of the car I think okay the next one is quite an interesting one It's from Dustin Cardadero he sent in a, a bunch of, of cars but this one here is the one that I picked because I noticed that this one myself before it was sent in but this is a Bayside Blue Stagia and first let me explain what's the coolness of the Stagia it's a Skyline station wagon basically it is a four-wheel drive with a five-speed manual. This one has a five-speed manual. And an RB25 engine. So not the RB26 of the GTR, but you can get these with the GTR engine in what's called a 260 RS. So in general, it's a cool four-wheel drive station wagon with lots of room and a great engine and kind of Skyline-ish. What makes this one extra cool is the color is Bayside Blue. You can tell because it says TV2 here which is the color code for Bayside Blue. And I was like, that's a little bit strange. I've never seen a Stagia in Bayside Blue. And so I looked it up, and from what I can gather, only 153 of them were made with this color. And as far as I can tell, Nissan never used Bayside Blue on any car other, other than the Stagia and the Skyline 25 GT and the GTR. And so it would be very cool to have a, a Stagia with this very unique paint color and it be the original paint from the car. Now that being said, the condition's not that great. 
uh, it has a number of problems. It has big scratches on this side, and that's a huge deal with the Bayside Blue, because Bayside Blue is a pearlescent paint, and it needs to be put on in stages, and you can't touch up paint it. A lot of people don't realize that. Midnight Purple 3 is also like that. You can't just touch up those types of paint, and you're going to see blend lines if you try to blend it in drastically because it'll look different colors from different angles and so if you do want to fix some body damage on a car like this you have to repaint the whole car at the same time and you can't really get the exact exact Bayside blue paint because I don't think Nissan sells it anymore and I think the uh, like 3M which is probably the most famous paint company um, they make a version of this they say it's 99% accurate but I'm sure that if you had them side by side with a real Bayside blue you would be able to tell Okay, so it's auction grade R. It has some corrosion problems too, underside corrosion. And I think it says the struts, maybe not. But underside corrosion, accident damage, and it looks like a medium accident because the front cross member is replaced. Right front inner panel has some damage to it that has been repaired, and core support has been replaced. Left front inner panel, same thing, deformation from a repair. The mileage is nice and low, and so it's a little. It's a car that kind of gets you torn and in, in one respect it's it's a classic part of history and it's very rare and it's very cool but the condition is not really there either but it's low mileage and it's five speed and it's a cool <laughs> Bayside Blue Stagia uh, so yeah um, to what to some people it would be perfect I think that it's going to sell for more than I believe that this car is worth because of the paint color my guess for this one is 450,000 yen. Okay, on to the next one. This one's sent in by Liam Irving. This is definitely one that falls into the category of something very cool that you never see. Most certainly this would have been an imported car into Japan. I don't think that they ever sold them. And at first it just looks like a regular Mark II Golf, but this is a Golf GTD, which is basically you take a diesel Golf and you combine that together with all of the GTI bits and then you add an intercooler to the turbo on it and so this was never available in the States or Canada I believe it was a Europe exclusive it may have been available in Japan but I don't really know but super super rare and uncommon conditions not good it's high mileage 368 068 kilometers auction grade R interior C exterior C exterior is not that bad but it does have paint crack and a lot of repaint marks but the big problem is that the engine doesn't run properly and it's puffing white smoke. And so that's a bit of a problem. Mileage is really high and I don't know if the GTD had anything like block or head or intake wise that's different from the standard diesel. It may just be the intercooler was on there to give it a little bit extra power. Plus the sporty suspension and these are the original seats in it too, Recaro seats. So it is a, a rare car, it's very cool, but like the last one, it might need a little bit of extra work and if your intention was to buy this to sell it for a profit which is what a lot of our customers do it would be hard to make profit on this car and it would take extra time and whether it be an expense up front or the time it takes to put together a car later both of those are things you want to try to see, stay away from if you're trying to make money okay so starting price is zero yen on it with the high mileage it's not going to have a market in Japan and or, or really that many other places uh, to be honest but it is very cool so I'm gonna guess on this one 200,000 yen and we'll see I, I don't feel very confident on that one okay on to the next one a car that I've never seen before in my life and that's a rarity for me so this is a Nissan Minstrel which is kind of a CRV like car with a diesel engine that's cool not a lot to, to talk about here because I don't know this car very well. The 2700cc diesel engine is super, super reliable. It's in like uh, the Nissan Caravan Homey vans and it's in some of their industrial trucks. I love that engine, but it's really slow. In a car like this, it probably shouldn't be that bad though. It's an auction grade 3, interior and exterior both D. Yuck. Big scratches, big rust. Uh, the front mirror is missing. It's supposed to have like a mirror here or something. Some sort of a damage to the front end U3 paint peeling on the front bumper yeah it looks like it's pretty rough um, ma, ma, ma. engine is leaking diesel is that diesel engine is leaking fuel hmm radiator core and front cross member are bent <laughs> 
Okay, so I only brought this up because I wanted to show you a car that I've never heard of before. Uh, it might be really popular in other countries, and then people are sitting there at their computer or at their iPhone watching this thinking, Derek, come on, everybody knows that car is super popular where I'm from. But no, we didn't have these in Canada, and I've never seen one on the road in Japan. So automatic transmission. Hmm. Rear tire cover is ripped. Yuck. Okay, looks pretty bad. Starting price, 30,000 yen. My guess on the price for this one is 70,000 yen. So, we'll see. Uh, Redneck Hunter sent that in. He said, cool little two-door Nissan SUV. Never seen one of these. Me too, Mr. Redneck Hunter. Wait, yeah, never mind. So we got two more here. The next one from Raymond Liang sent in this. This is a Mitsubishi Airtrek Turbo R which is Mitsubishi's competitor to the Forester, but not nearly as popular as the Forester. And so these are fairly uncommon. They are the running gear of a Lancer Evolution, together with the body of kind of a minivan, kind of a station wagon, kind of a crossover, I guess. But it is cool. I like it. Four-wheel drive, turbo. I think they're only automatic for this generation, but I think the generation before this might have been called the RVR, and I think you could get those in manual. Okay, 2003, so almost importable to Canada. I think that you can import like this type of car now. I don't think that this was one of the first months of them. Airtrek Turbo R four-wheel drive, auction grade 3.5. Uh, the engine in these aren't isn't as powerful as the Evo. I think they're 220 horsepower, where the Evo is 280. But being a turbo engine, you can probably put it up to 280 pretty quickly. 193.35 kilometers is pretty high for this, to be honest. Automatic, power steering, power windows, blah, blah, blah. Uh, aftermarket audio, steering wheel peeling, winter tires on it, undersized surface rust, aftermarket wheels, and some wheels in the car. Okay. Rear spoiler paint fade and oil leak. Evo engines, the 4G63 always leaks from the valve cover. Super common. So paint peeling over here, otherwise the body is not that bad. Says so some scuff on the front bumper there. And so it's not going to sell for a lot. Starting price is 4,000 yen. I'm going to guess on this one, uh, 29,000 yen. It's going to be my guess, which is less than a Forester. Uh, and I don't know. They're more unique than a Forester. Uh, I don't know which one I would, I would pick. I would flip a coin. They're both good cars. Okay, and the last one here, Zay Wang, and he has quite a little story to go along with this, and so listen to the story. He says, this car drew my attention because it has a 3.6 liter engine. After five minutes worth of researching and Japanese typing on my computer, I figured that this one is the Oten Otenger 300E that was sold as a complete car in Japan. Okay, and so... I don't know anything about the Oting, Otinger. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm probably not. But I know that they are a tuning company in Europe. And they make complete cars, Mercedes and Volkswagen. And they might do other cars. But I, I do know that they do Mercedes and Volkswagen. The seller of this says that that's what it is. Mercedes-Benz Etinga is the Japanese way you would say Otinger. But... I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't speak German. I'm sorry. 101, 395 kilometers. Mileage is unknown. 3.6 liter engine. Ettinger, 300 kilometer an hour gauge set in there. Power seats and wheels. Uh, the wheels are exclusive to the Ottinger. Apparently the seats are too, but they kind of look like regular Mercedes Benz. I think that this is probably performance-wise similar to an AMG of the same generation. And I think they called this a 300E hyphen 24V. Sort of the same way of a 190E 16V. And so maybe they were doing a hearkening to that one. I don't even know if that's the right word to use. Okay, but it is a cool car. Probably pretty rare. It's at, U uh, not US, at Zip Osaka. And so we don't know uh, anything about the car. They say it's an old, because it's an old car, they're going to be selling this as a mileage unknown car. Because you can get into trouble if you sell a car as a regular car and then somebody else finds out that it's a mileage unknown car they can claim toward you. So I think the, they're probably playing it safe because there's an Otinger 300 kilometer an hour gauge set in there. 
they don't know if that's original or not. Probably sell for a little bit more than a regular AMG would just because of exclusivity. I don't know how many of these were made, but a typical car like this is usually in the range of about 50 cars to 200 cars or something like that. So it's a little piece of history. It's cool. I like it. I like the wheels on it. I don't love them, but I like them, especially because they're part of the set. And then the car otherwise isn't really that different, which is kind of neat having a special high performance version that looks like the regular one. Okay, so price price wise, uh, this is an opportunity for me to be extremely wrong here. I'm going to say 1.2 1.2 million yen. And that's the end of this one, 10 cars this week. We'll do another 10 or so cars next week, so make sure that you check us out on Facebook and then you too can be a part of this. You can pick your own cars from the 120,000 cars a week at Japanese auctions. So thanks a lot for listening, everybody, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.